Fearless. Welcome. Welcome to your next Tuesday training. Hey, we're going to uh, we're going to try something. We're going to ask you guys for some input because uh, I don't like Tuesday training. I want like Tuesday smash down or Tuesday, I don't know, something. So we're going to do a poll and help you guys name this because to me, it's not just a Tuesday training. It's fun. It's like motivating, hopefully. Huh, you tell me. <laughs> and uh, anyways, that's what we're going to do. So be prepared for that. Um, welcome guys. It's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful day. So um, yeah, we have Carlene on today. And you know what? I'm, we've been talking with Carlene for the last couple months about doing this. And the beauty of doing this with Carlene is that she is so one of us. She's exactly what all of us have gone through. She's a mom of three. She's been building her portfolio at first while she was working a job in, in finance, in oil and gas, so a high pressure job. Um, you know, she's, she's one of us. She's been making it happen. Right, Barb? It is a beautiful day. Hey, Greg. Nice to see you. Um, so we're going to talk to Carlene today. Carlene has been able to bring her portfolio to over a $15 million portfolio. She's been able to, um, you know, she has 30 properties and <laughs> she's one of our Ignited members. He just came behind the camera and stuck his tongue out at me. So I'm not sure why, but anyways. Um, so Carlene is one of our Ignited members and over the last year she has really, really ramped up her um, investing and the reason she's been able to do that, what is your problem, um, is because she's really systemized and she's really gotten good at delegating and choosing what she's going to manage and what she's going to actually you know, contract out. And so we, we needed to pick her brain and find out. How are you doing everything that you're doing, Carlene? Because you're doing an exceptional job of it. So, hey, Gary, nice to see you. Ah, oh, Sylvie, no rain. <laughs> um, hey, guys, so good to see you. Yay, Dawn, I haven't seen you in a long time. Dawn's from Saskatchewan, so great to see everyone. Thanks for jumping on and saying hi. So, um, Carlene, hun, so we're using, again, you know us, we're always trying something new and trying to, we're using an, another new platform, see how this works today. So we're gonna be, um, you can let me know if things are going to work on here or not, yeah? Okay. Um, so I've gotta tell you about my week. This week, as an investor, so I've got our portfolio. So for those of you that don't know who we are, uh, Corey and Tiffany Young, we are uh, investors that help other investors to scale their portfolio. So we were able to buy over 100 properties. We we're able to do that in a three and a half year period, even though we had no money and no experience, but we were able to do that because we joint ventured with others. So we still have a lot of those properties. We still manage them ourselves as we have for the last 18 years. Um, and we, again, just like Carleen, we had to get systemized in our approach to them or else we never would have made it to this point. So this is my week this week. So, you know, in addition to all the normal portfolio stuff that you've got going on, we also have our corporate year end for our company that holds quite a few of our properties, most of our properties, I'd say. So we have our corporate year end. So that's real fun, right? It's where you really know whether you've kept up on your bookkeeping or not. Um, I had a washing machine that won't drain on a new tenant, which is never great to move someone into a great property. And then they're like, ah, oh, stuff's broken. Um, I had another flood. Um, we had some kind of crazy rainstorms there last week. And so we had another flood in our property. Um, what else? Oh, I have a property that the tenants were supposed to be staying in. Um, and they even signed a new lease starting for August 25th. And they let me know a couple days ago, they had a tragedy in their family, legit tragedy in their family. Um, and they're moving out of town. So um, last minute vacancy that came up in a property that's probably over, um, you know, generally speaking, a little bit higher rent than the average in the area. So yeah, it's been a little bit of a busy week. So as you know, investors, <laughs> we gotta learn how to mitigate our energy, our time, um, you know, all of those things that every single one of you guys are doing today. So I can see your gray hair in the camera. <laughs> right here to make sure it gets all fixed up. Hey, Carlene. Oh. Hi, hey, Tiffany, sound. how are you? Just adjusting. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? 
Okay. Uh oh. I think Carlene and Nin went through Shoot. some of this stuff earlier today, um, but I didn't do it with you. So hopefully it's it's Hello? not working great. Hey. Hey Jose and Greg. <laughs> um. So so here's the thing. How many of you guys, and I was a big proponent of this when we first started, I was a big proponent of saying, you know what, if you want something done right, you got to do it yourself. So how many of you guys kind of feel that way, that nobody out there is going to do things how you think? Nobody out there, right? Anybody uh, in agreement with me, or was I the only control freak that there is out there? Hey, Carlene. Hi, can you hear me now? Not working, hey? Should we try to can you hear me? stream through Zoom and bring it can back in? Can you hear me? We need to do that. Let's see if it comes up here. Hey, so. You can't hear me? Hi, can you hear me now? Oh. oh. Okay, so it's just your phone. Oh, it's just my phone. It's because you, you have the microphone plugged in. Oh, of course. So, my, Carlene, you're good. You're good. Don't change anything. Should I take oh, okay. off the microphone? Okay. Yeah, we'll have to go without a microphone. Uh, that's the only way we'll be able to do it. There we go. There we go. See? Learning lessons, right? Hey, Carlene. Yeah. How's it going? Hi, guys. How are you? I'm good. I'm super excited. I was just telling everyone that the reason why you're such a good role model, model for all of us is because you started right where the rest of us did. You were working a nine-to-five job. You were, you know, trying to just make uh, a difference in your family's life. Um, you were doing it as you grew your portfolio, and then you had, at some point had to make that transition out of a job. So you were in oil and gas finance, a good job. That's a mm -hmm. good job, well-paying job that you really had to <laughs> sacrifice to let go of, but you did it for real estate. And we want to know how you did it, why you did it, how you got to 30 properties, how you have $15 million in real estate, um, because not a lot of us have the guts to do what you've done. And we want to learn a little bit about that. Yeah, sure. I'd love to share. And I really think it's just like little steps at a time, right? It's never been like one big thing, but just all the little things along the way. And then here I am now and who, who knows in 10 years what that'll be. Right. So isn't it kind of crazy to sit here and talk about how you own 30 properties now? You're a mom of three, busy, busy social life, busy travel life. You guys travel a lot. Um, did you ever think you'd be sitting here? Yes. No, of course not. <laughs> right. But I'm, I'm, I'm honestly so grateful. I'm grateful that, um, you know, one of the benefits of what COVID has brought out is, is, is the community on Facebook for real estate investors. Like I've seen so many communities pop up and that's what was, um, I wouldn't say missing. I mean, I would pay for that before. I've been a member of Rain for a long time, and that's how I got that kind of. Sometimes I needed that focus, just once a month meeting. Well, now it's every day. If you want to get back on track, you just, you know, hop onto the group, ask a question you need to ask, or, um, you know, listen to what other people are doing, and, you know, it helps. Yeah, it does for sure. That motivation and yeah. that kind of that momentum. We always talk about that in Ignited, right? Um, Carlene is like, you need that momentum because, you, you know, you, you can get momentum going, but when, when that momentum stops and you get stuck, whether that's something personal or just a question you need answered, if you don't have anywhere to go to get that, you really can come to an absolute stop. And, and, that, mm. and you're always yeah. restarting. And restarting is really, really hard, right? An object in motion stays in motion. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So, um, all right, you guys are awesome. Everyone's telling me, hey, you, yeah, everyone's telling me, yep, I can hear now. This is all good. So perfect. So, okay, Carly, okay. you're a mom of three. You were working yeah. full time for a part of your portfolio building. You're now a full time investor. Mm -hmm. How, yeah. What do you think has really helped you to be able to make that transition both out of a corporate well-paying job, um, but also keep mm -hmm. the balance that you you have with being a mom first. What, what, what kind of bits can you right. give us? So for sure, it's, um, first of all, being clear on my goal, 
like if I, because I believe in real estate and what it can do for my family, um, for people in general, then I'm going to go for it, right? I'm going to keep uh, taking those steps and making that effort um, to acquire another property to really make sure I upgrade these properties that they're really operating at the best optimum level for that land use, you know? So if I'm clear about that, I can take action. However, the balance comes in where um, I need to systematize. I was actually, I think if I look at kind of the last few years, I think I'm really good at knowing when I've kind of hit, I wouldn't say a plateau, but I know when where I've hit a bottleneck and then doing what it takes to put the systems in place to deal with that. So um, a few, like a few examples are, you know, for sure, once you kind of like, once I was hitting kind of 15 units, um, to property manage, you know, and I was, I'm like a spreadsheet monkey. That's used to, that's what I love. Like I, I can create anything. I could probably create something similar to a property management software, but at that, but at the same time, you know, if I continue to do that, I would always have to be at my desk. And the thing is being a landlord and being an investor, you're always out and about yeah. You're you know, you're checking out properties. Um, I'm meeting fellow investors um, my trunk is my you know. is my office. My trunk is my car. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, right? And so you really need to make sure that everything is mobile. So when I made when I wanted to make sure like my documents everything I need is is online. My my property management software is online so I can access it from my phone. Then you become way more efficient. And you know, sometimes you know, you don't need to do that quite yet. Like I would say if you have, you know, like a few you can get away with not and you can kind of manage it with a word document or spreadsheet. But once you get to that level, you know, your time is better spent on something else. Um, that's where these systems and, and being able to let go of that is, is key. I think to, to allowing me to grow my portfolio and still have a balanced life. Cause yeah, traveling is important to me. I love traveling. I like taking a trip with my husband, just us once a year and then with the family a few times. So yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We're really going to try to kind of pick your brain on three specific things. So, you know, um, one, okay. what do you delegate and what do you keep for yourself? So, mm -hmm. you know, um, mm -hmm. that's a big thing. A lot of people believe that they have to do everything themselves if they want it done. Right. I, I was victim yeah. of that for a very long time. So what do you keep and what do you delegate out? So that's one thing we're going to talk about. Um, where do you find the people that do help you? the people, the software, whatever else. And then how do you decide to go with them or not go with them? So what are some of your parameters? And I love that you're so systemized that I can ask you these questions and I'm sure you actually have a system built around each of these um, questions. So, and then the third question is what will make you um, go with the contractor, let's say that you choose, and then how much do you manage them? Are you do you micromanage? Are you right on top of them? Are you kind of macro managing? So kind of those are the three points that we want to learn from you today. Because as a busy mom, as a real estate investor that already has 30 properties and manages a bunch more, um, you know, and someone who's, you know, travels and lives really, you truly live an investor life, which is not very common. Usually people in the growing stages are just working, 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 but you really do also enjoy your investor life. Um, so those are the things that we want to pick your brain on. So let's hit number one. What do you delegate and what do you keep in house? Okay. Well, I think number one is, is kind of figure out what you enjoy about the business. So real estate investing is such a big range. I mean, there's the people side of it. I love the people side. I love the business side. So, so, you know, think about, what is it you enjoy? Some people are way more handy and um, they kind of enjoy maybe the property manager. They may not love the calls that they get, but they do kind of like, you know, solving those kind of mechanical problems. Yeah. But um, for me, you know, I'm, I like business. And so I love deal finding. Okay. And really if you're an, and if you're like an invest, if you're a, like, if you just want to grow three, three properties on your own, then I think that's fine. You can just manage them on your own and you're not looking to grow. But if you are looking to grow that portfolio, then really um, a key skill that us real estate investors have is we're not just going out and buying whichever property we should be okay. We, we know our stuff. Like, 
we analyze, we, we read the research, we find out which is the best city and then within the city, what's the best um, neighborhood. And then from there, really figure out which ones are the ones that can give, give you like the best cash flow. And so um, a key skill of an investor is deal finding and um, financing. So if I'm spending too much time on other activities, that is taking away from looking for deals, uh, that's probably a sign. But I would also then decide to keep the things that I'm good at versus what I'm not so good at. Like, I would not be the one to go fix the toilet, you know, but that's where then you would then need to make sure you have a list. And I'm telling you, one handyman is not enough. You need like five, five handyman on your contact list on the phone, yeah. okay. you know, five of it. Like, okay. So yeah. what I'm hearing from you is, <laughs> is some pretty good jumps. So I just want to make sure to bring those out for one. You're okay. saying, what do you enjoy about the business? Yeah. So those are the, that's one parameter that you have is if you enjoy part of it, you will keep it. If you don't enjoy it. So that means that you delegate that out. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Because us being in real estate, isn't about like creating a job that we do, another job we don't like it's it's really taking what we have if, if this is our real estate business take control of what how we I run it. it take control of the pieces you enjoy and then give the rest I love it yeah. so for me for example it's funny because I hear people all the time say first thing to get rid of is property management you know delegate that out well I love property management and I've done ours for all mm -hmm. but one year of our 18 years of investing we had a property manager for one year and I went yeah no I can totally do this better <laughs> um but yeah. um, mm -hmm. for me, you know, I loved that side of it, but accounting, bookkeeping, that kind of stuff, I hated it. But guess what? I kept doing it for probably 14 years, <laughs> 13, maybe 13 years. Yeah, that's a long that's time. That's a long time <laughs> to do something you hate. And you know what? If you yeah. hate it, you're probably not about it. We, not only did we save money and save time, but we did like our accounting bills came down by like thousands of dollars a year because she did half their mm -hmm. work for them. So I love that. Find out what it is that you like. And it might be accounting. It might be property mm -hmm. management. Some people love fixing toilets. My dad mm -hmm. loves doing his own repairs on his yeah. own properties, but for others, it's not. So it's not a one size fit all fits all, which is awesome. Hey, Kelly, yeah. I Casimiro, Casimiro, uh, welcome. She says it's her first live with us today. So welcome, Kelly. Nice to have you here. Awesome. Um, so, so you first decide what you do and do not like, then you decide what you're good at. Okay. So that's the second thing that you said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So why do you think that yeah. has become a part of your investing? Again, as a mom of three that was working full time mm -hmm. for building half of your portfolio, travels a lot, very good, you know, busy social life. And yet you were able to build your portfolio to 30 properties, $15 million of worth. These are tips we need to know from you. Why do you think that yeah. you liking what you were doing had such an effect on you? Because at the end of the day, um, if you're spending time doing it, you're just going to, if you enjoy it, you're going to continue to do it. And it's, and when you do the things you like, it doesn't feel like work. You know, I'm sure we've all heard that before, but it is so true. Like when I'm going around looking for, the right deal for my investors. I love it. I, I don't think it's a waste of time to go and drive and find a deal. But if you if, if you ask me, go drive halfway across the city to um, show a property, I may not be so willing to do that, uh, you know, but at the same time, you know, it really comes down to just running an efficient business. You know, your time is your biggest asset. And so if you want to balance life, it's whatever I'm spending here, I don't have as much time there. And so it really comes down to how to run efficiently. If I'm good at something, well, then I could probably do it better than other people, yeah. you know, but um, I would say, yeah. Okay. That's awesome. So, and I, I love to how you say that, you know, um, it, it's a matter of being efficient in your business. So what is your efficiency might mm -hmm. be different for someone else's. And I always hear okay. this advice about you know, get rid of property management, get rid of bookkeeping, you know, whatever. But I don't think that's necessarily mm -hmm. true. In my experience, I, I do think that yeah. it's individual. What you get rid of depends on what you enjoy, what you don't. And one big thing I heard from you is choose some core pieces of your business that you feel you need to focus on. So 
for you, it was deal finding and what else? Sorry. And the financing. Financing. Piece. Okay. So that's where you spend mm -hmm. your time. So for you guys out there that are listening and you're wondering how did a mom of three do all of this stuff? So for you, you may have different parameters. So for example, once we got our buying, our realtor kind of all set up for us, um, our deal finding got real easy. At first it was horrible, mm -hmm. but we really systemized mm -hmm. that and it became a beautiful, simple process. So for me, that would not be on my list of things that I needed to do on a regular basis. So for you, for those of you guys listening, what are two or three things that you mm -hmm. need to be doing that Carleen says those are her two in your business to move it forward that no one else is going to do as good as you and you need to continue doing to move that business forward. So think about those three things, write that down as a little bit of homework after tonight. What are those three things that you need to be doing? Um, so I love that Carleen and then focus your time Thanks. on those things. Yes. Yes. Um, and then really, I mean, at the end of the day, it still leads to some of the same activities that do take a lot of time, right? So property management does take a lot of time, but there are ways then to met to do it without giving it fully away. So um, such as, well, we created a company to then do our property management. That's just more of a business decision because then you have an operating company and a holding company. But part of that would be then, I can hire out the first thing to hire out if you didn't want to give it to a full service property managed firm is hiring a leasing agent. So there's people out there that would love to make more money just on the side like this. I never, when I put an ad out on Kijiji, I never say this is going to be their full-time job. This is, I always say, this is going to be good for somebody that already has a job, but wants to make extra income, you know, um, yeah, and making sure they have like I the customer the service skills. Yeah, I, I do the yeah. same, Carleen. And I the often thing say, I think we're having a bit of a of a glitch here, maybe. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So go ahead. So so on that note, yeah, on the so, leasing agent note, yeah, you put out an ad. What responsibilities do they take mm -hmm. over for you in your property? Because you're managing close to seventy properties right now, right? No, we're um, managing um, closer to 40, but 30 and then yours. are mine. And I, I have a few more. Yeah, yeah, okay. exactly. Oh, I see. Okay, so 40 mm -hmm. units. I mean, that's a lot to be managing too. So, so when you mm -hmm. have a leasing agent, what kind of stuff do they do for you? So I, I just found that um, a lot of the time is spent showing properties. Like when, you're, when there's a tenant turnover, I mean, obviously, your first step is try to keep the ones you have. But if not, then um, a normal, you just got to lease it out again. So, um, you know, I use Rent Faster for all of my rent ads, which is really efficient because you don't have to redo them. But then truly, to actually have to go out and show it every time takes a lot of time. That's time away from my family. So this leasing agent, really, what he does is he will schedule all of the showings. You know, he'll get an email Whenever there's a request to view, he'll line them up and he usually tries to show, you know, do one showing with multiple people. And in COVID, you know, they're spread out a bit more. Um, but that is their main responsibility. And over time, I've handed him a little bit more than that. So part of that too would be uh, once we've landed. So how I keep control a bit of, of this process, even though I've given that step away is I still do the, uh, the tenant verifications myself. Okay. I still like to review the applications and um, because then I feel good about that. I know who is there. I may not have met them in person. And if I can, I will do the lease signing with them. So then I, you know, but that's also something I may also let go of soon, but really not having to drive halfway across the city to show properties, even if it's just two times, a week and that's only for one property like I, I try to time my uh, my lease renewal dates spring at the beginning of spring and the beginning of fall so I mean I will sometimes have a number of them at the same time yeah. and the benefit of that is you know you get 
uh, overflow. If some, if one is rented out, you can refer them to the next. Um, but truly it saved me a ton of time. Like over the summer, we've had a few and I've been able to go out and go camping with my family and, you know, go on, go to Kelowna and stuff like th things that are, or even if it's just sitting in the backyard one evening, you know, that's, that's important. To that's me. important to you. And you know what, Carlene, as you've heard us preach for, um, you know, the last how long now is we feel that that is one of the elements that's going to keep people in investing long-term. Uh, because if you just work your life away and just, you know, drop a, everything to go and fill your vacancies, which you do have to do, yeah, you will not yes. stick around in investing because it gets really, really tiresome. So I love it. So, um, you know what, That's we it. also do the same thing with our leasing agents, you guys. So those for, that are watching, so we also have leasing agents. I also, generally speaking, our advertising is standard because we've had the same ads and the same properties forever. So I throw out the advertising. Um, I will, you know, put things in place to filter. I will then choose who's going to actually be allowed to go see the place. Um, we stagger our viewings. If you guys want to a uh, little bit more information on staggering viewings. We've got a great YouTube video that we can drop into the comments here. Sorry, we've got a big truck going by. <laughs> I'm sitting in our front yard today because it's really hot on our deck again today. Um, but on staggering showings, like Carlene had mentioned, um, but really having a leasing agent that really just goes in and opens the door, allows them to see the property, and you continue the rest of the process, I think is a great use um, and savings of your time so that's a great tip if anyone didn't hear that go back in the replay and watch that part again because carlene had some great stuff there um okay so you delegate out the stuff that you're not good at or, or that you don't like so that's beautiful um you also delegate out things that do not move you towards your goal so for those of you that are watching you need to pick two or three goals that you have in your business that you really need to keep up and everything else Take a look and see if you can delegate that out. Good rule of thumb. Hey, Carlene? Yes. Yes, totally. And I mean, at the end of the day, there's still like things like leasing or parts of property management will still take time. But, you know, you could do a lot keeping things in-house by just doing the leasing part. And if you've got a good contact list of key contractors, well, then you could that part just connecting your tenant with your with your uh, handyman or with the plumber that doesn't take much. I mean, that you can do yourself. Okay. So it's a good way to see. Yeah, yeah, I love that. So tell me about that. Yeah. Tell me about like, okay, so you connect your your tenants straight with your contractors. How have you prepped your contractors? Because some contractors are like, no, I only want to deal with you. Mm -hmm. I don't want to deal with your tenants. So how have you prepped those contractors so that you can do that kind of stuff? Well, when we have the initial like conversation, when we say, yes, I think this will be a good fit. We could work together. You know, I'll have, I'll basically have a steady stream of work for you. Right. That should keep them interested. Um, and so that's where I'll say, I'll explain what my process is. And generally you don't necessarily want to be that metal man, that middleman to say, okay, are you free then? And then go to the next person, your tenant to say, are you going to be home? So I just tell them up front at the beginning, um, this is and this is where I, I use my property management software because now what I'll do is I'll make sure I put that work order into the system. Then it sends him an email. And so it's a detailed email about, okay, what needs to be done, who you need to speak to. It'll have the contact information right there and they know to contact them. And it just makes this, this like really smooth, the process. And then once they're there, I do ask them to take a photo of the work done and text Ooh. me. Um, and that at least keeps me up to date so that I don't have to follow up, say, oh, did you end up going or find out later? Oh, sorry, you actually didn't end up going. Um, can you go? Now? You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I love that. So I'll tell you yeah. what, I'm going to steal that from you because just last week, I, or just this mm -hmm. last week, I had a washing machine that um, we had put, um, oh, I see my hands in. So Greg says crazy looking hand tattoos. So these are actually henna. They're not actually tattoos and they will go down in about 10 days. Um, but I was really missing like folk fest this year that we have in Edmonton and heritage days. And so anyways, I went and got them done. But, um, but this, just this last week, Carlene, I had um, a brand new tenant, fantastic tenants in a great place, move in. The washer wasn't rinsing or wasn't like, um, 
letting the water out. So, um, and my mm-hmm. appliance guys didn't show up twice, twice. Mm-hmm. It sucks. It, it makes us look really bad. These are people we've used for 15 years. Mm-hmm. Um, but having them right. take a picture and send it to me when they're done, it would get rid of what you just said. You don't know whether they showed up or not. Um, and then I wouldn't have to be checking with the tenants, which is great. So I'm going to steal that from you. Thank you for that one. Yeah. And I would say, you know, it takes a while to train them. Like, I mean, I wouldn't say they all got it right away, but I also know that the ones that do do that, um, I may give them more jobs because I feel like you're following the process and the system. You're easy to work with. You get more of the work. I love it. We have a couple questions for you. So, um, yeah, sure. Uh, let's see. We've got... Let's see. Okay, so Debbie Belfort asks, how much do you pay your leasing agents? Mm-hmm. Um, so I pay my leasing agent $20 an hour. And so um, I don't know how that compares to everybody else. But I think that's a fair price because of, you know, the skills required for it compared to other jobs out there. Um, and, okay. you know, at the for me too, like, I'm... I feel like it's my responsibility to really make sure that I find uh, reasonably priced help because if I like, including my contractors, right? Because I need to make sure that I'm managing the expenses so that there's just at the end of the day, more net cash flow and income for your joint venture partners from, from the, yeah. Yeah, It is your responsibility to do that. So that's awesome. So, so you pay them $20 an hour, just flat. I would say 20 to 25. I've paid more as well. So it just really depends on uh, their experience. I don't mind training somebody else because the one I'm currently using, he didn't have experience, but he's been so responsible, so responsible that now I'm willing, I trust them. And so I'm willing to give him more work. And yes, I do it by hour. Um, and then there will be certain jobs that might be per job, like as in, um, Right now, the leasing part of it, like if he was to do the leasing of the contract, um, it would also be by hour. But I can also see if later on I'm asking him to do, say, maintenance, possibly maintenance check or other type of jobs. It could be like a lump sum. It just depends, I think. So and and just like um, there's so many different ways to do it. We do have a video. I wonder if it's I don't think it's even up anywhere. Maybe we'll put it on YouTube and we can share it out. um, So anyone who wants it um just go to our youtube channel we'll do that in the next few days, a couple days here um but it kind of explains how we pay our leasing agents as well it's a little bit different but it's funny how mm-hmm. it doesn't mm-hmm. have to be the same right it's what works for you and what's working for the people that you work with we have a couple more questions so people are saying what property management software do you use um i currently use buildium and i've been happy with them um, it's they they charge on a scale, so you're not overpaying for like a hundred units when maybe you just have ten, right? And so it's incremental. Um, so then I feel, and really when I calculate it, it comes down to about a few dollars a property a month, and it that really is worth it. Then if you think about that, because what's nice is you get a dashboard, and so the key things you always want to watch for is are there any requests for maintenance. Um, what are the leases coming up? So I used to have it on a, on an Excel spreadsheet, but I didn't program it to notify me. So you want to just be able to see a graph or a number that says, Hey, I've got three coming up in three months. I've got four coming up in five months. And so you can prepare for that, you know? And so you just kind of mentally know what are the activities you need to put in place. Yeah, That's nice. So, and and I think that that's one thing that I've always really respected in you is that you are so systemized and you know, I've, I've asked you how, you know, what do you do here? What do you do there? But there's always some sort of a software or a program or a tool that you're using. It's not like you all have this all in your head and you're just on top of everything, which is what it seems. No, that's what it seems like, (laughs) (laughs) but yeah, you're using tools. So someone asked, so at what point would you start using a property management software in your opinion? Um, how many properties do you think? Solomar. So I started, so I would say you, if you don't use a property software from managed software, then you have to have a good list or you have to have a good Excel spreadsheet to make sure you're tracking everything you need uh, manually. Um, but I would still say, I think I started jumping over when I had, oh, I think 15 
around 15 units. Okay. That's, great. That's when I decided to. Um, yeah. So that was just for me. I don't know, you know, how others feel about that. But definitely, when I did do that, I just felt like things were more under control. Um, another reason why it's good is once you put in um, it'll tell you what's been paid right away. So that's where that mobility, so you need to pick a management software that you can use on your phone because then if you're in the car and you accept a payment, you want to be able to see that go through. And then you'll want to know, okay, how many are left? Because, um, you know, I try to train them to pay before the morning so that that way I can batch my work and, and accept all the payments at once. I don't want to have to follow them and just oh, watch what comes in and then put it in because then, that takes up okay, more time. So you're talking so, about rent, rent uh, payments? Rent payments. But that's why a, a, a property management for software helps because it helps you track it when you're on the go. I don't have to sit back at my desk to see, to update my spreadsheet to then see who I need to follow up with who haven't paid or, or just have, have been right. late. Yeah. 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 And I love how you said you've, you've, you know, systemized even them to go in and say, you know, it's expected on the morning of when it's due, not by 5 p.m. or whatever, because then you're, like you said, you're waiting all day. This way you can, yeah, morning of, and you can keep up on it. So that's awesome too. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's it for questions. Yeah, I think that's it for questions. So, okay, so let's say that you um, now need a contractor, a handyman. Where do you find these handymen that okay. are not full-time for you? Because that's what I know we found a huge yeah. problem with that when we were, you know, had only a handful mm -hmm. of properties. People couldn't, we couldn't give them enough work for them to be full time with us. But we also needed them to kind of be at our beck and call because it was tenant related, right? So where did you find these guys yeah. and how did yeah. you vet them? Um, I still do it through uh, Kijiji. So I mean, if it's like certain, a specialty trade, I mean, you can find them easily online because they're already marketing themselves as a, as a special, as a specialist. But if for handyman, then I do uh, advertise for handyman slash maintenance okay. contractor. And so those are three words that I think catch people's attention if they fall in that category. Um, people that are tradesmen that are handy in other areas will, will respond as well. Um, people with specific handyman experience will, you know, will call. And then people that have done maintenance for larger projects will also call. And same with like how I advertise for the leasing agent. I do specify that this isn't a full-time job. It's on a contract basis and um, great for somebody that wants to get extra work. Awesome. Or make extra cash. Yeah. Okay. So interestingly, yeah. you're not going and scrolling through Kijiji to look for people who have posted. You are actually posting proactively no. what you're looking yes. for. That's hmm. right. Okay. Any yeah. other, and I feel like, yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say any other um, tips of what you put in those ads when you're looking for that handyman, because that's a key component to someone you can trust and just mm -hmm. send the work to that will deal with your tenants for you. Um, you know, key. Right. So any other tips of what they should put in an ad? So, I do prefer the ones that will, oh, what I put in the ad, I will give specific examples of the type of work. So that clears up any ambiguity in terms of what kind of work they would get, right? So I'm like, sometimes like really typical or ones are, sometimes it would be replacing light fixtures, re um, fixing a toilet, um, being able to replace uh, uh, taps. Um, if, you know, I find people with skills to, to fix appliances harder like they're usually not in this group. I mean, that would be a huge skill if they could do that as well. Um, but things like that, I'll say, you know, you know, they may have to uh, fix a door jam or replace a, a, a screen door. So by giving examples, I think that tells them the kind of work and the scope of work. And I always tell them like how many units that, um, that I'm managing. So then they know approximately in their head, they probably have an idea. Does that mean one call a month or does that mean a call a week? Right. Or even a couple okay. of calls a week. Right. So really clear in this is the type of work that you can expect. So that's going to weed out people who are very much, you know, like, Oh, I only want bigger jobs or like I, one of our handymen, who's like, yeah. he's, he should be retired. He's not, but he should be. And he just says, I'm too old to do yeah. those big jobs, but he, he loves the tinkering and he's good at it. So he mm -hmm. only wants the smaller jobs. So putting in specifics about that 
and as many, you know, what they can expect for number of calls. I love that. That's great. Um, Solomar is yeah. also asking, what mm-hmm. do you typically pay your handyman? Now, just so you know, Solomar, that really does mm-hmm. um, across the country, the pay scales for any trade mm-hmm. or whatever is super spread out. But Carlene's in Calgary. Um, so what do you pay in Calgary? Mm-hmm. So I pay 35 to 50. Okay. Yeah. So, and um, I find that's a decent range um, because you're not going to get too much less than that because, you know, there's driving involved and you don't, you know, people want to make sure it's worth their time. Um, and then I just find you get a good, you catch the right people in that range. And then I guess what I would also say is um if, if they don't, if they find that too low, well, then they're not going to apply, which is, which is just fine too, right? Like there's one person that was saying, yeah, well, that, you know, that might be a little bit, but there are other people. And that's what I would like to say is, you know, you might even get five or 10 people that say, oh, this isn't quite right, but you will find the one that's actually right for you. And that's my, that's been my experience. You know, I've had to go through, I would say three other le- leasing agents um, before I landed this one that I really feel good about keeping and uh, you know because they had other stuff too um but i feel like it takes a while to call that your your team you know yeah, totally i love it yeah um and just so you know your fellow igniteds your fellow ignited members are cheering you on mm-hmm. i don't know if you can see comments but Melanie's like your Aww, systems are so inspiring um inspiring sorry and Brian, he's like, great advice, great nuggets. Tina, at the same time, used the same word nuggets. So I don't know if they're like, but uh, she's like, great nuggets. Thanks, Carlene. So yeah. Anyways, lots of people cheering you on. You're doing great. So thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you. Um, Okay. So now what level of, um, we have like five, seven minutes left here. So what level of, um, interaction do you have with them once they are on a job are you micromanaging are you macro managing mm-hmm. you know what's your kind of system mm-hmm. there um I think I'm somewhere in between like I would say I send them um they get the email for the work order I would send them a text saying hey I sent something for you when do you think you'd be able to go in and then he'll give me um a timeline that I think uh, so then I'm like okay if it's good or not because I will that that work order will also have a date and usually I give them like a week a week and a half if it's urgent if it's water related issues it's urgent right but then that way I can um, sort of keep tabs on that I'll put it in the property management software just so that it updates the task and I can see it flow through um, and then and then I wait till I get that text. And if I don't see or hear anything, that's when I know to follow up. Okay. That's awesome. Um, I, and I love, again, you keep going back to how it's the property management software is helping you to keep up on all of that stuff. So it's not something you have to remember or, you know, put in your phone as a reminder or write it down or whatever. It's something that is kind of automated when you've got a certain set of things going in. Yeah. Yeah day um if you haven't taken care of it and you've got a due date on that it'll be on your task list so it sh- sends you what you need to you know but like I said I mean I don't like for me property management isn't something that I love love and so I'm happy to do this and I'm, I can see myself moving more of that on to somebody else but for people that are looking to scale and and really balance their time this would be a big step along with obviously bookkeeping as you say yeah uh, you know that's another so, thing. And I know that you've scaled in the last year, you've started scaling with joint venture partners to really take your portfolio to the next mm-hmm. level, right? Um, so when you're talking yeah. with a joint venture partner about, you know, about investing with you, are some of these things, some of the things that you showcase about what you have to offer as an investor? Um. Like, is this some of the things I, I showcase? Yeah, like when, you know, when you're talking to them, do you talk yeah. about the systems that you have in place and right. the software that you've already done the research on and you know how to use and all that kind of stuff? You know what? I don't. I probably take it for granted because I think from, I guess I focus more on what I can give the investor in terms of a good return or is it income they're looking for? What is their end goal? And I really focus on on finding the right um, investment 
vehicle for them. And it could be, you know, it could be a duplex single family house. And now I'm focusing more on multifamily to really help the investors that may have money, but don't necessarily want to qualify, you know, or, or maybe they're looking for a return for like a shorter term period. So when I, I guess I would have to answer your question, honestly, I don't, I take this, all of this stuff for granted. I think I do manage my business well, but I don't talk about it very much. <laughs> it's, it's interesting because, um, well, in, in mm -hmm. part of the demos and stuff that we have in Ignited, you'll, you've probably seen them. But um, for us, that was actually something that we were able to, you know, kind of talk about with our joint venture partners that they were like, wow, you've got this all figured out. Wow, it's very systemized. Yeah. And, and that confidence that it gave them in our ability to do our job for them um, was, was really, really, um, I think it really helped in people investing with us. Right. So that's why I asked the question. Cause I could see for me anyways, yeah. I could see investor or partners just being like, yeah, I want a piece of that because you're doing things systemized and no one wants, you know, to be partnered with someone who's running around like a chicken with their head cut off. Right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> but no, that's and that's a really good tip. And I think that's why in real estate, like, I feel like I'm always learning. I love being part of your group. And because any little tip, like it's just an adjustment. Okay, maybe that's something I may talk about, right? Because that is so key for a long term investment. It is really about not after you've acquired the right investment. It is about making sure you can run it for the long for the term that we've, we've set out. Yeah. Right? yeah. So totally makes sense. Awesome. Good stuff. Um, okay, so Mom of three kids, 30 properties and counting, scaling up this year with joint venture partners, $15 million worth of um, real estate, in, you know, uh, portfolio. Worked part or worked full time for part of that. Um, what is in, kind of in closing, what is something that you'd say to a new mm -hmm. investor that's sitting in that spot where they know they want to make a change for their family, but they still need the income. Mm -hmm. They still need to stick doing what they're doing. Yeah. How, when and how did you make that transition out of a well-paying oil and gas job into full-time investing? And what can you kind of help others to kind of figure out? I think, well, first of all, I should, I, I need to give credit for um, my husband, right? Like he's, um, you know, I really run the operations um, but it's his support, um, so support and the second income that has been able to allow me to do what I love do, to do this, right? And, and right now, he's also playing a key part in our business development side of things. Um, so I do want to say that because, you know, not everybody is in the same situation. So I just wanted to, to note True. that. But, you know, it was a little bit of a mind shift. So it started slowly. Like I would say when I first started, even when I first started working downtown, I was like, had it felt like, you know, there has to be something more, you know, maybe I had a little bit of an entrepreneurial spirit. And I was thinking of maybe a side business way back then. But then I, you know, I had a family really put a lot of um, just focus on that growing, having our family. And it wasn't until um, I think after my second one, I had gone back to work. And then I, you know, you, you really then think about where your time is spent. And I was thinking, wow, all of my best working hours are in this office. So that's when, you know, the wheel started um, turning again. And that's when I decided to take real estate more seriously, like wanting to actually grow it more. Whereas before we did, we did things here and there. Um, and then, so that's when I requested to get part-time hours and uh, they were willing to give that to me. When I came back, after my third child, then it was, the environment was different. I wasn't able to keep that. And I went back to full time. And then that's when I really started really thinking it's just what's in my mind. If I kept thinking I'll never make more than what I make there, of course, I'm never going to make that move. Right. Um, so if in my head, I'm saying, well, I'll never make this much doing this. But if if you open up the possibility of thinking, well, what if I'll actually even make more and support my family more by doing this, by creating more opportunities and doing bigger deals, I, I could be helping my family more. So anyways, that was a mind shift uh, change for me that helped a lot. And I wouldn't say you don't go from that to 
like I'm still not replacing my income, but um, I'm on my way. And some, you know, I think that's what it's, and that's what I encourage a lot of um, other investors is you really, it's just all of these little steps, all of these little decisions. And more and more I'm hearing other investors um, making that a priority for themselves saying, I'm going to focus on real estate and I'm going to not let the job get in the way. And so if you make that conscious decision, uh, that's, that's big. That's yeah. Huge. And, and what I'm hearing from you too, is what drives me a lot. Sometimes I, I can't do stuff for my, like you said, you didn't love working downtown from the very beginning, but you probably would have plugged away at it for a really long time. But when you start looking around at others that you can actually change their lives and influence and your kids and that's when, for me, that's when I get driven. It's not mm -hmm. off of stuff. Mm -hmm. I wish I could get driven for myself, but I just get lazy. But I do get driven <laughs> when I think about others. So getting mm -hmm. back to your why, and I think what you said your too why. was a little bit about believing big. So to, to replace mm -hmm. your income, you had to go big in real estate, right? Not just small. Mm -hmm. You had to believe mm -hmm. that. Yes. Yes. And I would say, you know, and I've heard this before from other people and I, I have really tried to follow it. I don't even know if it was consciously, but um, when I feel it, that there's a deal that I know is good, that somebody can benefit, then I actually, I commit to that knowing that I'm going to make mm. it work. Somehow, some way. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I've got enough resources, I've got enough experience, I've got, I know enough people that I'm going to make it work. And so I think a bit of that faith yeah. has helped. A bit of that thinking bigger of not just what how I know. How did you know though? Knowing that there's other stuff How did you there. know, Carlene? How did you just um, know that it was going to work? Like, I'm going to do this and it's going to work. You don't know. You just, like, like you, do, you don't know, but I think, you know what it is? Okay, so if I... Uh, look back I think every little uh a little win that you have every house you get builds your confidence a little yeah. bit more so it is really important to take action that's always been like my personal model has always been like he's just do it yeah. but I do understand when people don't do it there's always something else that's stopping them but if you do I guess wherever it is that you're lacking confidence it's actually where you need to take more action so um, that's a, you know, a big one for me this year where, you know, what is it? You don't feel like um, that next house is right. Well, then you've got to just do more analysis or learn more about it so that you can do it. And then once you have that one under your belt, well, then you're going to do another. And so every time you're just building on that and it's, it, and that's key. It's the self-development aspect of real estate is, is something I really yeah. love. So, so just do it. So take action for one, but for two, learn, like if you're lacking in, in if you have fear, yeah a way to get over fear is education. Yeah. And I think too, you're surrounded by awesome yes. people. You really, really are. I totally right? am. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And that's been so awesome. And I don't know if it was just because of COVID, but it's everything. That's why I'm really grateful for the ignited group, the fearless group, um, my friends from rain and just people that I've met. And it's just, it's been so nice. It's like your tribe. And so, um, you know, you have them to go to. Yeah. yeah. I think it's awesome. So, um, thank you so much for your time. Um, and I love how um, open and honest you are that you're like, um, no, I probably should be doing that, but no, I haven't. It's just real. <laughs> and that's what we need is people that are real people mm -hmm. like you that we can, you know, relate to and say, okay, so I'm not that crazy or I'm not that off. I can maybe do this too. And belief is, is so yeah. huge. So Yes, everyone's giving you a big heart shower, yes. Carlene. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, thank yeah. you. Um, so thank thanks you so much. Oh, thanks so much for having me. Yeah. Okay. And, um, you know, there's been a couple extra questions. If you want to jump into the feed after and answer them, that would be yeah. fantastic. Yeah. And then that way people will know where yeah, to find you totally. too. So, um, yeah. Yeah, they can always reach out. Like, I'm, I love meeting fellow investors. So if anybody just even wants to have a chat or on Messenger or even on Zoom, yeah, reach out. I'd be happy. Awesome. Yeah, you always are. So. So, that's great. Yeah. Okay, guys. So <laughs> thanks for joining us. If um, anyone okay. wants to find Carlene, she'll leave some messages in the chat. And then so you can friend her and find her there. Um, we Next week, we're talking about multifamily. So Corey and I, over 100 properties, and we've had them for 18 years, we've never branched into multifamily. Um, and a lot of people ask us why. Like, and we do have really good reasons for it. Um, 
So we're going to share those reasons next week. So for those of you that are asking about our boot camp, yes, we announced. I said we're doing it, um, and and I had the date wrong. So it is at the end of September. It is the last Tuesday in September. We are starting boot camp. So five days of um, joint venture training. So how do we start? And and you know what? I think we're going to even talk about more raising capital versus joint venture, just because the the climate is changing so much right now in the finance world right now so you know not necessarily joint venturing but how do you raise capital from the people around you what questions do you answer how do you present yourself you know what are the first four steps we're going to go through in that week um it's free of charge so for sure get ready for it we're going to have a great time in boot camp that's where we met you a year ago hey Car carlene Yes, it's been a wild ride, like so awesome. So anybody that hasn't been doing it, or even if they have, totally recommend it. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah, I, 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 everyone has so much fun in it. I, I have no problem recommending it. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, guys, have a great week. We'll see you next week for Multifamily. We'll see you at the end of September for Boot Camp. We do this training every single Tuesday, so join us. Um, and, you know, have a great week, everyone. Thanks for joining us. And thanks again, Carlene. You're awesome as always. Oh, thank you. you. Bye.